Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2 of the World with Nate podcast. This podcast was created to shed light on some of the stories and lessons that we accrue during our time here. My hope is that those stories will bring us all together in this thing that we all call life. My hope for this podcast episode is that you find it both enlightening and enjoyable. So, sit back and relax. I want you to enjoy the ride. Special thanks to my friend Buck Kurt of Hawkeye Storage and Consulting for helping me bring Season 2 of The World with Nate to YouTube. Hello everyone and welcome back to Season 2 of The World with Nate. Awesome guest here today. I got the experience to meet him when we were at a fundraising event for a prior guest, Jade Hess. This is Dallas Jacobus and he is a country music superstar, <laughs> former Iowa football player. Like I said, we had met at a fundraising event. Um, I was in the back, and there was a couple extra seats up front. So Jade, the uh, founder of QE and Camry's Tribe, asked if I would come sit at the front with her. We were having a good time. Uh, she had told me, hey, we have a special guest who's coming to sing. And I was like, oh, who is it? And she told me, and it was Dallas. Well, there was a spot open right next to me, and Dallas sat down right next to me, and I got to know him. And... I was blown away by your humility, the type of guy that you are, Dallas. Um, you fit into me and my wife's conversation awesome. It felt as though we were chatting with her younger brother back in the mm -hmm. days of <laughs> Iowa football, and it felt so comfortable. Yeah. So thank you for taking your time. I know you're busy. Thank you for coming on The World with Nate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Heck um, yeah. Well, your name is Dallas Jacobus, and nothing is more fitting in the country music scene than the name Dallas. And when you told me that... I thought it was a hoax or a stage name, but your yeah. parents, did they have foresight knowing you were a country music? No, actually, <laughs> my, my family's not musically inclined in general at all. Um, you know, my mom did choir and stuff, and so did I, but, you know, we, we've always been an athletic family. Um, my oldest brother played baseball in college. My okay. other brother was a All-American decathlete at the University of Arkansas. You know, I played football at Iowa. I mean, um, you know, we've always enjoyed music, but... Music was never part of the plan. There was never sure. a foresight. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. going to make him a country yeah, music they, star. They, they did a good job, though, I will say that. Heck yeah, yeah. It seemed to work out. And yeah. the name Dallas. Uh, yeah, I get asked that a lot. People think it's always think it's a stage yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's your real name? Yeah. yeah no, it's, it, it actually happens quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that, you have it uh, nice. And I have a picture, because you mm -hmm. gratefully let me take that picture of your guitar strap mm -hmm. and the awesome workings of the art on that. And I was blown away, like, how could they have picked a more perfect name I know, for you? I mean, it, it could not be any better. <laughs> no, hell yeah. <laughs> so um, it didn't start off as country music, though. You had said your brothers played sports and you mm -hmm. played sports. Yeah. Cedar Rapids Kennedy kid. Yes, sir. Yeah, heck yeah, so, an Iowa guy. Yes. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, actually all of us were multi-sport athletes in high school, too. Um, you know, I played football, baseball, did wrestling, uh, threw in track. My oldest brother did football, baseball, track, and basketball. Okay. And my other older brother did football, and, and he focused on baseball at the end of it. But, I mean. You guys um, were busy. Yeah. Busy. And, but I, I also did the, the choir and the show choir in high school. Um, and I actually beatboxed for our acapella choir. But Very cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were, we were always doing something, though. Yeah. For sure. Very busy, I'm sure, in high school. Yeah. So the music, that was an interest for you early on? Yeah, I've, I've always really enjoyed music. Um, you know, it's it's always caught my eye, but, you know, it was never really something that I uh, thought would be, would come to fruition, I guess. Right. Um, I, I remember in high school, um, for show choir, you know, people would get mad at me because I'd come to practice late because I'd be at football. <laughs> yeah. And I, I said this verbatim, I was like, Music's not going to get me anywhere in life. Damn. Football's going to get me into college. <laughs> hey, say and it again for the camera <laughs> so we can write it down. <laughs> said, music's not going to get me anywhere yeah. in life. Football's going to get me into college. Yeah. And, uh, well, it did. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I guess I was right, but yeah. I was also wrong. That so. two-edged sword. Yeah. Because you exactly. were a hell – so doing this, you know, I have to do some research. And digging in, you were a hell of a high school athlete, all district, all conference, yeah. all state. Um, yeah, I mean, placed uh, – Second in discus and uh, and first in shot put, state champion in shot put. Uh, placed seventh in the state in wrestling. I uh, was a captain of the second place football football team yeah. squad. Yeah, you guys um, had a very great and, year. You know, played varsity baseball as a sophomore and went went to state with my older brother. I mean, very accomplished um, athlete. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, you know it was it was just uh, you know sports was my life growing up, and, yeah. and music was kind of something I, I did on the side that I enjoyed as well. Yeah. 
which is cool that you could have both those passions, yeah. you know, and, and balance them. Because I can only imagine the amount of time and effort that you were putting in high school yeah. trying to get to the next level. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was you know, 15-hour days where I, I would show up at the school at 6 o'clock in the morning, yeah. get my workout, go to my early bird, do all my classes, you know, go to football and, uh, you know, go to go to my choir practice right after yeah. that. And I, I wouldn't leave until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, and, in high um, school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's a... Uh, it was it was just a grind. I don't know how it was I did setting it you up for yeah. now. Yeah, for it was. Traveling it was exactly. Being ready. Hell yeah. You know, very busy. Uh, you know, I've never been one to sit still. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we are going to talk about that and how we our lives have got on a linear path mm -hmm. and how busy you are. But the college thing, being an Iowa kid, was it always your dreams to be an Iowa Hawkeye? Or oh yeah, hundred um, percent. My grandpa's had season tickets. Um, very cool. Since I think I want to say like the nineteen seventies. Wow. Like, he's, he's been going to games forever. Um, I went to my first game when I was six months old. Okay. Um, you know, my, my mom has a picture of it. Very cool. She actually, you know how they did during the COVID, they had the little uh, pop-up heads? Yeah. She put my six-month-old picture on, on, on one of those. But Very cool. Yeah, so, uh, you know, football, Iowa football has been part of my life for a long time. I mean, I've been tailgating at those games, like I said, since I was six months old. Um, and, you know, uh, I actually was – more accomplished as a track athlete in high school okay and uh, i was getting ready to commit to the university of iowa to do track and uh shot put was, and discus uh yeah shot, shot put and probably i would have been more a better hammer thrower you know okay. discus i'm not six six so yeah. i don't have the long <laughs> levers but um definitely shot put but yeah, i was actually getting ready to commit and uh that was when you know i got the call um that they wanted me to be a preferred walk on and i i didn't even hesitate I was like, hey, let me call my mom tell her I'm going to come in. <laughs> I yeah. called my mom. I was like, hey, mom, I'm, I'm going to Iowa. She's like, that's awesome. Did you call uh, Did you call Coach Dubs? I was like, no, I'm going to call Coach Ferentz when I get off the phone here. Heck yeah. And she's like, what? No <laughs> that's way. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, it, was, it, was a, it was a very special day. Yeah, I'm sure. And your whole family, like you said, yeah. if your grandpa's a season ticket holder, yeah. and that's been ingrained. Yeah. That's and, awesome to yeah. hear. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, you so know, when you say preferred walk-on, what does that look like for people who might not know? Yeah, so um, a lot of people kind of have the general idea of what a walk-on is. Um, you know, they try out for the team, and right. you know, they've got a certain amount of spots past the scholarships where, you know, they can offer guys to be on the team. Um, Iowa doesn't really necessarily do that. Um, I'm sure it has happened, but um, not that I'm aware of. Um, but they do it with this thing called preferred walk-ons where, you know, same recruiting process, um, but they don't have a scholarship, but they, you know, they want you to be on the team. Um, and I think a lot of colleges are doing that now. They want you to earn it. Yeah, exactly. Not just yeah. come and get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the thought process behind that. I yeah. Think. Yep. Hell yeah. So that was what you were looking at and you gobbled that opportunity up right away. Yeah. I, it was, it was something that I, you know, I knew I couldn't pass up and, Heck yeah. uh, definitely didn't. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that experience like transitioning from high school to the college level? You said you're busy as hell in high school. Yeah. So um it was it was a different kind of busy. Um you know in high school, I don't know how it was for you, but I was uh <laughs> I was smart enough to not do a lick of homework. I just decided uh, not to do yeah, a lick of homework. Yeah. No, I well, like, no, well I, I I didn't want to either. <laughs> um so, you know, I I got by, I you know, had good grades, you know, above 3 point and um you know, skated through, was yeah. was able to, you know, score high on my ACT. So, you know, getting into college was no problem. But um, when you get into college, it, it you, you have to do the homework. Right. Um, yeah, it's a different model. You know, and uh, so I, I had to learn real quick how to how to be a student, I guess, um, instead of just learning. Because I love – I still learn. I mean, I think the other night I was just sitting on my phone reading science articles yeah. just because I – I'm the I same way. And, I like it. And I, when I watch TV, I'm watching, like, educational documentaries, documentaries and stuff. And, same, same. Um, so, you know, I've always loved to learn, but uh, I guess I had to learn to be a student. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you know, in high school, I played four different sports. Um, you know, it was three months, you know, do your sport, you know, move on, do the next yep. thing. And there's there was always something changing. Um, college, that's, that's not the case. You know, you, you August, you have camp. And, you know, you're all the way through um, beginning of January, hopefully. Yeah. Um, you get a few weeks off, come back, and you start training right, right again. Right back at it. And then you got spring ball, um, you know. And then after that, you get like a week off, and then you go back to training right again. Yeah. Um, and then there's never really the, 
I guess the change of scenery. Uh, it's it's the same same uh, weight room every day, same indoor facility every day, um, and uh, you know it gets to be monotonous. And but at the same time, it's it's always I guess it's always changing. You know, you're always changing your weights. You're always bumping up. You know, you always Hopefully. have a, you always yeah you always, <laughs> you always have a goal in sight. Yeah. And uh, that was that was another thing that um, you know you don't I guess you're never starting over, which some people would find refreshing, but. You know, it's it's really cool seeing that build. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and it's a it's a five year process, four and a half year process, where you know you're you're consistently working to become you know the strongest you can, the fastest you can, yeah. the hardest hitter you can, you know, the smartest on the field you can, and um, you know, being able to consistently work at that for five years is uh, you know, it's really cool. You you uh, you feel like sometimes you're not making any progress, and you know, you get to the end of the end of the run and you look back and you see how far you've come and you're like holy cow wow i can uh you know you really see what you've done i guess yeah yeah when we get to the end and mm -hmm. we have that opportunity to yeah. think back that's it, awesome. it's especially something that um you know you, you've wanted to do your whole life yeah and uh you know knowing that you, you've done it yeah this is really 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 yeah cool. not many people get that opportunity you know whether it be circumstantial or mm -hmm. by choice, yeah. But to have both of them work out, yeah, and then you capitalize on it, yeah. It's, it's pretty a, sweet. It's, it's a cool it's, story. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a really good feeling though. Super that, rewarding. You know, uh, I've been able to do everything that I've, I've wanted to do. I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, not not by chance either. Um, you know, I it, I, you know, worked for it, but um, knowing that I I've done that and and I continue to do it, I guess, is a is a really really good feeling. Yeah, you can take some of those lessons and apply them to the next stages oh, in yeah, life. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, and yeah. That sports, I, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like sports are, is just... Uh, Fundamental yeah, in the growing process. Exactly, and, and you can you can apply it anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, you can apply it to school, you can apply it to work, you can apply it to marriages, mm -hmm. relationships, yep. um, anything. Uh, if you just think about it the right way. Think about and, it, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I found that, you know, my base in sports growing up has... has you know, led me to um, any success that I've had. Hell yeah. Achieving great things yeah. with yeah. that base. That's yeah. very good sentiment. And um, I'm sure at some, like as a parent, you know, thinking of all the, t all the time that we're going to spend trucking mm -hmm. these kids back and forth. Oh, yeah. But and, and it's it is a labor of love. I mean, labor um, of love. You know, I've, I've like I said, I've got two older brothers. I've got a younger sister, um, who are all very accomplished as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, well, there, there was times where I remember there was one weekend in specific. Uh, Devin, my oldest brother, was playing baseball in uh, Detroit. Derek was down in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, playing a baseball tournament, and I was over in Omaha, Nebraska. Jeez. And you know. Uh, we only have two parents. Yeah, so, yeah. Somebody's you know, missing out. Mom was with my mom was with Devin. Uh, Dad was with Derek, and you know we, we we've been lucky enough to have a, a base with a, my grandpa and, and my Heck my yeah. aunt, and um, you know I I can't tell you uh, of a time where I didn't have somebody there. That's awesome. Which is which is special, very very special. Mm -hmm. um, and you know I, as much as I've done, um, my parents and my support has done loads and loads more. Hell yeah, that's good and it's it's hard to fail when you have that kind of support. Yeah, that's it, a it, strong it really sentiment. Is, it really is hard to fail when you have that kind of support. And I'm hoping that they can listen and hear yeah. what you just had to say oh, about dude, it. Oh, they, 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 they know, they know. I tell good. them all the time. Very good, very very good. When you decided uh, the University of Iowa, did you have a major in mind? What was your plan? Yeah, so I, I was football's going to get you to college. I was, I was dreaming <laughs> big. Um, I wanted to be an orthopedic thir surgeon. Okay. Uh, found out real quickly that I didn't <laughs> want to go to school for 10 years. Yeah, that's a um, quite the intensive. And, uh, you know, and then I started, you know, kind of soul searching. I, I wanted to be a nurse then. Um, found out with clinicals, you know, in sports, it's, uh, you know, that's a that's a tough road to hope. Tough, home. tough, yeah. And uh, so I started thinking about, you know, things I'm passionate about. And, uh, you know, I've, I've always loved to, uh, you know, help special needs kids. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I was in Best Buddies uh, growing up and uh, grew up with a, a kid with Down syndrome. He's a man now, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> you guys uh, both grew yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, we both grew up. And, uh, that so, was a program, that Special Buddies was a, a mentoring program? Right? Yeah, so in, in elementary school, um, okay. you know, uh, Best Buddies is what it was called. You okay. know, you just get paired up and, um, you know, you spend time with them. Yeah, and, learn and grow. Yeah, exactly. Um, Very good. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was a cool experience. I wasn't able to do it in high school just 
because I literally <laughs> had kept no your plate time. so yeah. full. Yeah, but uh, it was still something I was passionate about. So, uh, you know, I was kind of looking for avenues to be able to do that, and I uh, found occupational therapy. Okay. Um, and so that was that was what I was going to do, and you know that was that was my plan. I was pre OT all through, um, you know, my last four years. So after my first semester, um, that's what you were I was, was pre OT the whole time, and. Um, you know, when, when push came to shove, music was knocking, and, and I'm, I'm going to find a way to get it done that <laughs> through music, I guess. Heck, yeah. <clears throat> so um, uh, the the point, the playing career, you played defensive line. Mm -hmm. When you uh, – a lot of – there's been a focus now on um, – and I – this kind of jogged my mind when we were sitting. So we just went to an event, and mm -hmm. we saw each other, and the event was Warrior Rising. And for those of you who might not know – it's a uh, community of veterans who give back to other veterans in the entrepreneurial space, trying to grow and facilitate other veterans' growth through their business. And Dallas sang the national anthem at this event, and I didn't know that he was going to be there, so it was a surprise, and I was mm -hmm. thankful that I knew somebody there. And he sang, sang that, and it was for Rob O'Neill, who was the Navy SEAL who took the shot on Osama bin Laden, and we got to sit there and hear that. But when I was initially sitting at my table, because we were at separate tables, um, we had I was speaking with Nate Stanley, mm -hmm. who was, I mean, I was ignorant as to who it was at first, because <laughs> I don't, so That's awesome, like, that's that's a breath of fresh air, like, people, like, get, like don't worked know? up. Yeah, when you, when people don't know who you are, like, it's, like, cool, like, like, you were probably talking to him. Yeah, and, like a know, normal You know, a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, people will talk to him, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, small talk and then football, 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 yeah. football, and just talk your ear off. And, you know, it's, uh, for me at least, it's, it's a breath of fresh air when, you know, people have no clue who I am and they're just talking to me. And, you know, they're like, oh, what do you do? And it's like, well, I sing. Oh, you sing? That's awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah. what's your name? Like, well, yeah, like, can I find it? Like, it's really cool. I think, I think it's awesome. I hope that and, you and keep And people that get worked forever. up about that. They're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know who Nate Stanley was. <laughs> oh, I did. God. I kind of like, felt dumb. I'm like, like, I'm an Iowan. I've called myself an Iowa fan. I don't even know who the when quarterback do you see, is. When do you see him without his helmet on right. and shoulder pads? That's true. Like, That's very like, true. And so, but, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate when people <laughs> don't Hell know yeah. who I am, well, I guess. And to attest to him, yeah. the guy's humility and oh his character. Incredible dude. Incredible dude. Incredible dude. And we had some deep conversation. We were oh, talking yeah. about his injury and coming yeah. back from that. Yeah. No, and he's 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 just a stand-up dude. Solid guy. Yeah. There are a lot of those that I found that come out of the – it's a testament to the Iowa, Iowa program. Oh, yeah. and, and they'll tell you, um, you know, they, they recruit the man and develop the player. Oh, I um, like that. And, uh, you know, and, and it goes to show. Um, you, you it got, does. You, you have guys, you know, like Nate Stanley that, you know, you can sit down and talk An to. NFL quarterback. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. You know, the people that are supposed to have the biggest egos in the world. Yes. Nothing. I did not get a touch of ego from that No, he, he doesn't. He doesn't have any ego. No. I mean, he's he's down to earth. And Christian Welch was there as, too, or as well. And same same deal. Um, yeah. You know, if – if you didn't look at him, you, you would have no. <laughs> no, like I didn't. You, I didn't know. He's uh, just a stand-up dude, and yeah, uh, you know, I there's can say miles guys, about the people. Yeah, there's countless guys that I can say that. Yeah, about. And, which is cool, um, and then to be a part of that fraternity. Yeah, exactly, and they actually have this thing called a uh, Hawkeye Legacy, okay, um, which is basically like a fraternity of you know former uh, Iowa football players. Okay, and they they have events that you go back to and. Uh, you know, I've been been able to talk to guys that you know played in in the '80s and played Hayden. in the '90s. Yeah, yeah, Heck yeah. And, and uh, it's it's just cool to see um, and hear how things really really haven't changed in the continuity in the program, which is, is something that's very response. special. Yeah. And uh, you know, be, and being able to go to tailgates with these guys, these guys will yeah. text me. I mean, I'm 20, yeah. 23 years old, and they're like, "Hey, come to our tailgate." Yeah. Well, that too, and the networking. Oh, the it's thing. incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I didn't realize it until oh, I yeah. got the back seat in Matt's and, career. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so many guys that are just wildly successful yes. outside of sports. Well, I can understand the transition. Yeah. As hard as they work in the athletic yeah. realm to be – some people can find that same success if they transition it. Yeah. You know. And, and well, honestly, though, just being in sports um, – you learn how to be on time. Yeah, <laughs> very true. <laughs> and, and and it's something that is very very highly, um, like you need you need to do it. Mm -hmm. It's it's not something that's you know questionable. Questionable. No, yep. you, you're going to do it, and if you don't do it, you know you won't be successful. Yeah, you you will not. And you know my brother's gone into the professional world, and uh, it's it's unbelievable how uncommon it is now. 
Uh, yeah. The people just aren't on, on time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and, it's starting to become a lost art of being timely. Yeah. Which is sad. And it's, it's like I was telling you earlier, man, I woke up at, you know, seven o'clock this yep. morning. And I was like, I was like, is it 10? Is it 10? Like, do, I was like, I'm supposed to be there at 10. Like, I like just freaking out. Country and, music singer. Yeah. Who spends <laughs> his time in Nashville is ner uh, still nervous to come on I, the world and then see your false If I, if I say I'm going to be somewhere, I, you know, hell yeah. And if it's, if I'm able to do it, I, I want to be there. And, uh, you know, and, and it's important to me. If it wasn't important to me, I wouldn't have been like that. that. I'm like, hey, man, sorry. Maybe another time. Like, I'm busy right now. Like, but, oh, yeah. you know, this is important. You know, I, I appreciate uh, just that, hearing what, what, you, what, you're, what you're doing here is really special. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you, dude. Yeah. That means a lot. You're going to make yeah. me blush on my own <laughs> damn podcast, Dallas. <laughs> Dang. Well, we hit the, the football talk, mm -hmm. and that is important because I used to love the game I played. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, yeah, I love football, but what I love even more is what you're doing now with the uh, music career. Yeah. And you said you had um, loved music, you were in in the chorus, and uh, but how did your this avenue start? How what's well, the exact it's, moment? It's good that we talked about football because that was actually the the precursor to it, I guess. Okay, um, I think it was my after my second year, after the first year of the wave um, that summer. So was, the wave for people who I mean, a lot of people know exactly yeah. what you're talking about because it's one of the top uh, top ten sports center this year nominated yeah. the wave as like number two yeah. best traditions. Yeah. So the wave, um, if you'll do the honor of explaining what yeah. that is, um, it was actually a grassroots movement. You know, it started on Facebook of okay. all places. Like you know, um, some I forget her name, but she uh, she posted on Facebook that. Um, you know, we should all wave up to the Children's Hospital because the Children's Hospital was being built over the stadium. That okay. was the plan. I, I believe Coach Ferentz actually, you know, said he wanted that to be a thing. So, you know, the kids and their families could, you know, watch the games from there. Which, which is something that is so cool. Yeah, which I, I don't think you can find another sports organiza organization in the world. that would be like, yeah, build a building that overlooks our stadium so people can get free. Free, get free tickets. Like, yes. like nobody would ever – like – I've heard it's not stories. Of like yeah, that. I've heard stories of you know hotels that would overlook practice facilities that you know they would say your blinds have to be closed during yep. practice. Like yeah, that's wild. And and Coach France was like, yeah, build the hospital over it. That's we cool. need to do it. Please build the hospital over it. You know, like yeah. <laughs> like that's so cool. Yeah. So um, then, at what point in the game does this happen? At end of the first quarter is when it happens, and uh, it's actually cool because uh, the first wave. We, we didn't know it was happening, if we're being honest. Okay. Um, you know, some so guys, you're on the field when Yeah, this we're is on the happening. field, and, okay. you know, end of the first quarter, you're making your adjustments. Okay. You know? um, the first one, it, it wasn't something that the university said was going to happen. And, uh, you know, we've been in camp for the past month. You know, we've been focused on, you know, getting prepared for the season. We've been locked away. We've been at the hotel and the, to the complex. Because during that room. point in time was COVID? No, that or was no, that, that was, was before. That was I when are we talking? This was so you were locked awake because of 20, training. Yeah, locked away because gotcha. we, we were hotel and then doing spring practice, and, hotel. Yeah, okay, so gotcha. Um, you know, Sorry. that last yeah. part of summer, we're 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 in camp, we're in camp mode, we're all football all the time, focused. Um, and so we we really hadn't heard about this, and so the first wave happened, and uh, you know, we we didn't participate in that. And the coolest part was is the next day, Coach Ferentz comes into the uh, team meeting room. And he goes, uh, some of you may have noticed it, um, some not, but, you know, the fans are all waving up to the hospital at the end of the first quarter. He goes, uh, that's something that I think is important we're going to, we should be a part of and something that we're going to be a part wow. of. And from then on, we've, we've waved that's every been single in the time. Iowa way. And, uh, it's, it's so, I think it's so cool. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. That one, it happens that, you know, you got all the fans on board. Organically. Yeah. Grassroots, like and, you said. And, and two. Coach Ferentz, you know, the next day before we even broke down film, was like, hey, we're going to be a part of this. The we're, most important thing yeah. on his mind yeah. was to address do, that. It was the first thing he said, yeah. It's and special. It's special. And, and and it's been, you know, time and time again, Coach Ferentz time and time has, again. has donated to the hospital and, and done done a lot of stuff for the hospital, which is which is so cool. But, um, you know, it's, it's very obviously a, a priority of his. Heck, yeah. And uh, it's really cool. It's become a centerpiece of Iowa football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And 100%. What better, what what more important thing could we focus yeah. on than that, right? Yeah. And, and that, that was from my first days on campus. Um, you know, he, he said, you know, visit the hospital. You know, we would visit the hospital all the time, you know. 
get a get a group text on Teamworks. It's a app that you know can send out a message to the whole team. Yeah. Hey, looking for you know five to six teams. guys, and I'd reply two minutes later and be like, Hey, sorry, we're full. Damn. Yeah, only, yeah you know, everybody wants to do it. Into, yeah, and uh, awesome. It was it was really. It's a cool. testament to the yeah. type of player that we're yeah, getting it, at the university. Exactly. Yeah. Hell and, yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of stand up guys. Yeah. Um, Very much men. so. Yeah, men. Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so Iowa football, the wave. Then when did the music? Oh yeah, we were talking about music. Music. <laughs> I yeah. Into it. yeah. Well, so, it's hard hard to come out of that yeah. because it's such a special moment. And I will share with the people on the world with Nate the videos. And what else is cool is when we're looking at the big picture, there have been people who have came on the podcast and spoke who mm-hmm. spent months yeah. in that and very room who you waved to yeah. Dallas. Yeah. And it's now so, we're sitting here talking to you and they're gonna wa- listen to this and they're gonna say, man, he was a football player back then and mm-hmm. now what you're doing with the music you're producing, it's really special yeah, and it's, it's huge. Uh, it's and, and I like to say, you know, we'll get into it where so I hurt my back um, that summer and, uh, you know, it took a while to diagnose it. And, uh, you know, I, I really didn't play it all that year. Um, and I believe we were at our what was I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is very important to mm-hmm. me. What was that like when you go from being a high school athlete of your caliber? Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't feel like you're gloating. You were good. Yeah, you yeah. were very good. Yeah. And then to go into the university and have your mindset set, this is uh, once in a lifetime for mm-hmm. you and your family, and it's important to you. And then to have something serious like a back injury like that. Mm-hmm. Do you feel comfortable talking about mental health? That has been a focus. Yeah, that was that was actually my first ever experience, I guess, with mental health. Um, you know, you go from, you know, 15-hour days in high school, and, and I'm doing everything to now I get to – be on a bike for maybe an hour during practice and I, then I watch practice and I got to go to rehab and then you know it's just like your whole life turns into this injury yeah and and you got to focus on this injury and rehabbing it and and being a long-term injury um you know it was it was it's something I'm still dealing with um to this day and you know that was my first time where you know I was like I can't do it like you know maybe football's not for me maybe I'm not cut out to be a college football player and um you know we we have a sports psychologist at the at the university. Um, Carmen is her name, and uh, you know, growing up, you know, being like a a manly man, I guess, you know, playing sports, being as yeah. strong as you can, and you kind of you kind of get the uh, I guess stereotype of you know just deal with it, deal with it. I've been um, there, Dallas, and and you can deal with a lot, um, but when it's every day for months, you know, it gets to a point where you know. I can hold this water bottle out here for a long time, but there's going to come a point where that water bottle feels like I'm, I'm holding up a house. And um, very good analogy, you know, because that's 100 yeah, percent true. Yeah, and and uh, you know, you you need you need to you can't just deal with it. Right. You need to find a way to deal with it. You can't just be like, all right, this is what it is, whatever, yada yada. Like, move on. Like, you can't move on. It doesn't it's, work it's like there. that. It's there. It lingers, and um, you know that this. I uh, started seeing our sports psychologists and, you know, just talking about it was actually helped, helped. a lot, you know, yeah. and, and that's not something, it's amazing, you, right? not something you do a lot. No, yeah. But uh, when but we're it, saying this thing and it might seem simple, mm-hmm. it's not always the case. No, not at all. And, and, you know, growing up, I mean, with the military, like, like you did in sports, uh, you know, you, you can deal with a lot, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, but big like, things happen. And if you, if you can move mm-hmm. by them, you know, by all means, move by them. But, you know, an injury like that, when football is your life at that point, that's going to s- stick around for, you know, I think it was ended up being six, seven months yeah. before I was able to, you know, get back into it. Um, to your normal. Yeah, yeah. Not even to your normal, just to just to be able to get start doing it again. Right. You know, then I, then you got to learn how to play again. Falling way and, behind. And, 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 yeah, and, you know, taking on a block is, is, is different because – you know, you got to figure out how you're going to do that without hurting your back again. Right. And, and it's it's in the back of your head, no matter how you know mentally strong you are, it's there. Um, and and you know you got to then you got to learn to deal with that. Yeah. Because you're you you know you got to learn to trust yourself again. Um, you got to learn to trust whatever you injured again. And uh, you know, I actually ended up. What was most therapeutic for me was you know I picked up a guitar after the season. Okay. And. Uh, that was where everything started. I wow. Mean, it had been about three years now. Um, 
since I picked up a guitar and, you know, my roommates, <laughs> they hated it. I, I wasn't any good, which you shouldn't be when you first right, start something. Yeah, but, you're absolutely um, right. You can't start they, it be great. They were all, they were actually pretty pretty supportive of Hell it. Hell yeah. Um, you know, I, and I, I would play guitar and um, just learn my favorite songs and um, just try to do things. Do you remember the first song that you learned playing the guitar? Yeah, it was uh, Hurricane. By, by uh, Luke Combs. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I, I still say that at, at a lot of my shows because, okay. uh, you know, I'd come home. We'd come home from, you know, uh, a night out in the off season, and uh, my buddies would be like, hey, dude, play guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, I got one song for you. <laughs> <laughs> one song I know very well. <laughs> very and, cool. uh, yeah, so uh, I learned that, and um, I actually, that summer, I uh, was about six months into playing guitar at the time, and we were up in Minnesota fishing. And uh, family course, trip, or no, my, my roommate Sean Byer. Okay, um, so basically family, because yeah. you know we went to high school together and Heck yeah. did all that together. And uh, you know, I still I'll still go visit his parents. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to be, yeah, so even when he's close. when he's gone, yeah. Um, so we were up in Minnesota fishing, and uh, the chorus to "We Wave," you know, just kind of popped into my like literally popped into my head like i just started singing it and i'd, I'd never attempted to write a song before um you know, i was just playing guitar because you know you enjoyed it, it something to do yeah, yeah. and uh therapeutic yeah and, and it the chorus popped into my head and uh i was like guys i, th I think i'm writing a song right now <laughs> and what am i doing and they're like they're like well, they knew how bad i was at guitar um and at this point i knew four chords yeah that was that was it i mean and i still use i use those four chords to a lot. Every sh yeah, I could play a four-hour show with those. Hell chords. yeah, dude! <laughs> but uh, um, so yeah, I knew f I knew four chords, and um, we got home from the fishing trip. I, I uh, sat down with my brother Todd Gusta, who who had helped me a lot with guitar, um, and uh, we knocked. I mean, I think it was forty-five minutes. In the you song. knocked out the song. The song. Was, the song was done. I mean, and hasn't been touched since. So the song "We Wave" mm -hmm. is now synonymous with what we spoke about—the players turning around and waving to the hospital. Yeah. What are some of the lyrics that you put into that? Yeah. So I, I, it's kind of a story, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, the first first uh, verse is kind of building the game day atmosphere. Okay. Um, you know, first line in is it's a cool fall morning on a Saturday. There's a buzzing in the air. The boys got a home team home game the whole city's going to be there okay so that's that's the first few lines of it um you know setting up the experience yeah of, uh Tell you know if, if you've never been to kinnick on game day and tailgated um there's a there's a whole different en energy around the Hell around yeah. the whole city and uh you know i'm getting goosebumps right i know now it's about iowa it. football yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's for real I'm getting goosebumps right now yeah. talking about it but uh you know, it's something that's special, and uh, so the first verse is, you know, setting that up, you know, talk about the guys swarming out. Because the plays. swarm is the Iowa football players get yeah, ready, and yeah. then they play. That's them. when we come out of the tunnel. Yeah, and, and it's uh, just juice, straight electricity wild. when Absolutely. that happens. I'm getting goosebumps again. But, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that yeah, that's the whole first verse, and, uh, you know, I kind of turn it around in the, in the pre-chorus. Um, you know, it says, but our biggest fans are up above looking over our shoulders, sitting, waiting patiently for the end of the first quarter. Um, and then I go into the chorus, you know, when we wave to the kids that cannot play, put a big smile on their face every football Saturday, which um, I love it. Dallas. It's and, and, and I, I just feel like I'm painting a picture the whole time. Yeah. Um, second verse uh, is, is about, um, you know, a kid that's um, been up there, you know, in the song, I specifically talk about a, a, a boy. Um, you know, Who you knew? Not not at the time, but okay. you know now now he's that he's become somebody. Yeah, he, he he has become somebody. Very cool. And uh, you know, I talk about a guy who's been up there, been did all of his treatments every like the whole week. You know, yeah. he living in the hospital. You know, kind of just you know just down. Like you know, the hospital's not a, a very fun place no. to be. Um, you know, if you're there, there's there's a reason why you're there. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, you got that weight on your shoulders. Yeah, and. Uh, and I, and I turn into the, you know, so it starts out staying up on Friday night after a long, long week. You finally start to see a smile. There's a different energy, um, you know, and uh, which I, I, I love that. You know, I do too. Just kind of like knowing that, you know, even even before the wave, before the game, before anything happens on Saturday, before the lights are on, before the pregame talk show, before the first tailgaters show up, you know, it's starting to build. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know. The kids, the kids are. You know, they know what's coming. They know what's coming. They're, they're excited. They're looking forward to it. Yeah, um, and so the next next line is my favorite part because in my head, 
I pictured how I was on game days. Um, so it's he wakes up at the crack of dawn, puts on his black and gold. Oh yeah, and that that was me. That I, gave me that was that was <laughs> that was me on on Saturday mornings when I'm at my grandpa's. I mean, I was I, we would be out there tailgating by five thirty, and I was up by four. Yeah, you know, with my I ready my, to rock, I had my Sean Green jersey. You know, Hell yeah! Like, like, hey, like one of the best to, running backs yeah, to do it at ready, the ready to go and. Yeah. Uh, you know, to me, that was that was kind of what I was picturing. That like, is awesome. You know, that just the, the excitement. And then I followed it up with uh, he sits there waiting eagerly to go up to the 12th floor, which is the viewing area that looks over Kinnick. Um, I think you can see it down to, I think the 7th floor can see into Kinnick. The games. Um, but, you know, 7th on up, they can all look in, see, yeah. the, see the games, watch watch the games. and um, But the 12th floor is where, you know, all the media is and um where the kids are able to go up and you know it's it's got the best view it's the top floor um but yeah the 12th floor is is the wave where, yeah you know you got espn's up there with their cameras and all that stuff. it's become the tradition yeah exactly um and uh so the second second course is different from the first course okay. so it's from the perspective of the kid and so where he can wave with a big smile on his face, watch the Hawkeyes play, and forget about the pain. Hell yeah! Which, which is you know, um, I, I still, I still say to this day, the song was given to me. Yep. Um, just word for word, I, I just like I, I listen to it. And I'm like, there's no way I did that. Like, there's no oh, way yeah, I wrote unique these words. Experience yeah. your life. Yeah, and um, it's uh, I still to this day say. You know, it was given to me. It's um, meant to be. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the second verse um, or second chorus is, you know, talking about him. Um, and he waves, finally, let's go. Mama's got some hope that he feels at home when he waves. Um, you know, I love that. I mean, that that I just feel like this song painted a picture. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's t I love this. This is my favorite song I've ever written. And it blew up. It was my first one. <laughs> yeah. And, what are the odds of all of that? <laughs> so, yeah, and you go into the hook. Um, you know, I talked about the game day experience waving from the stadium. I talk about the hospital life, you know, waving from the hospital. And then the hook uh, turns around to, you know, the kids that, you know, never made it mm -hmm. out of the hospital. So um, Because, unfortunately, that's, that's a, reality. a sad reality. That's a reality. Um, and, you know, uh, and, and that was actually a lot of the people that reached out to me. Um, you know, the the song says, for the boys and girls who never made it home, we won't let you go. We'll always remember you. Heck yeah. When we wave, remember that smile on your face. You're the reason why we play. The pain's finally away. And we wave for your family back home. Your memory your memory will live on. You'll, they'll never be alone when we wave. And, uh, you know, that's the, peop the people that, you know, you can tell what scenario people were in based on what part of the song touches them. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, th and people, people have a, every, just about every person that comes up to me has a line that they say, Oh, when you said yada yada, like, or when you said this and, uh, you know, I can tell, you know, how, what, what their experience was, you yeah. know, if it's from the second verse, you know, unfortunately they were, they were in the hospital, but you know, their, their kids got, got to go home, mm -hmm. got to sleep in their own bed, got to go to school. Um, and you know, if it's the third verse, you know, um, I, I typically don't even know what to say cause, yeah. uh, thankfully I've never had to deal with that. Um, right. you know, never, you know, obviously I don't have kids, but I've never known what it's like to lose a kid. Right. Um, and my mom actually works in the, in the NICU at the hospital. Heck yeah. So, and, uh, you know, it's HIPAA, real close to your yeah, heart. HIPAA and all that, um, you know, she, she couldn't really talk about her job, but Growing up, you could tell um, right. when it was a bad day and when, when she lost a patient. Absolutely. And, um, you know, which I wish I would have said something about the nurses and stuff in the song, but, you know, you only have so many words. But um, <laughs> You only have so many words, you only, and you do yeah, what you can to support yeah, them anyway. Yeah, and, uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I feel like I tried to explain the way from as many points of view as I could. And you did, and you incorporated and, um, so many different people. Yeah, and then I should say, I'm saying, like, I wrote the whole song. I wrote it with my brother, Todd Gusta. So uh, I want to make sure that that He was gets said. his due um, credit yeah, as well? Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, you know, uh, just, I, lo I love the song. So, so do I. And I will share lyrics, the whole mm, lyrical yeah. breakdown of the song, and yeah. I'll, sh I'll share videos and all mm, of that yeah. so people will be able to listen to yeah. it if they haven't heard it already. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's even, if, even if you have heard it, um, yeah. you know, I think, I think it, 
I do this with songs all the time. Um, you know, I think I like a song, and then I go and I listen to it, and then I really like the song. Yeah. Because, you know, um, a lot of songwriters and a lot of artists, um, you know, once in certain genres, you know, some some song, some song uh, genres are about, you know, the beat and, you know, right. the dance and all that. But um, with country, especially. Um, and what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And with country, you know, you can, uh, if you listen to it and you, you break down it, you break it down, uh, you know, there's some really, really creative songwriters Hell out there. Yeah. Like, um, it's, it's wild. And well, I, the it's stuff such you're a talking about and like, the story. Yeah. The ability to to story tell through music, yeah, and that, that's that's you know kind of been one of my biggest focuses on, you know, when the songs I write, is telling a story, um, you know, because I don't know about you, I'm not I'm not much of a reader, um, I, I've never been one to sit down and read a book, but I love stories. Yeah, like, me I too. Think stories are so like, I can sit here <laughs> yeah. and tell like sit here and tell stories all day, and I can sit here and listen to stories all day. Heck yeah, but. Um, you know, and I think music is just an, another level on that because, you know, you can add in the minors and the majors and, you know, I can't play guitar that well, but yet. the guy who plays, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the guy who plays guitar on, on this EP, uh, just unbelievable. Destroys it. Um, and, and it's almost like he's singing as well with his guitar, you know. Um, just the way he plays is just phenomenal. And, Heck yeah. Um, so don't get ahead of yourself. EP. Yeah. So you wrote this song, The Wave, mm -hmm. and it blew up. And it's yeah. it, it's being used um, to glorify and to magnify an awesome cause. Mm -hmm. um, and we all agree on that. And what was next? Yeah, so I, I actually, Sean Byer, the same guy I was up fishing with, uh, I was at his family they have a end of the year bonfire, okay. where, you know, where they all get together, have a bonfire potluck deal. And uh, his mom had a speaker and, you know, like one of those speakers you buy from Sam's Club. Okay, it comes Rocky with a mic. Yeah, yeah, like it comes with a mic. We got one, Dallas. The kids yeah, love it. Yeah, no, they're awesome. But um, she she comes up to me. She's like, hey, Dallas, can you help me plug in this microphone? And it's literally you just plug it in. Yeah. So I, you know, take the microphone and plug it in. She's like, all right, now you got to sing your song. Oh, and I was got like, your ass. I was like, ah. Oh. And at this point, I had, my roommates had seen it. My family had seen it. And then... You know, other than that, like, you know, they told this was your first concert. Families. Yeah, this is my yeah. first time ever singing in front of anybody. So I, I'm sitting here. Were you here, nervous? Be not, honest. Not really. If I'm okay. being honest with you, I'd, I'd had a few beers. So, okay, so you were yeah. even keel. Yeah, you know, okay. it was just, you know, a very social gathering. Everybody I, I was around was people you I loved. trusted. Yeah. So I'm sitting here. I, I didn't have my guitar with me. Okay. So I'm sitting here. I'm playing this video off my phone, <laughs> singing. I'm trying to like sync up to what the guitar is doing on here because yeah. I can't really hear it. I'm like looking at my <laughs> phone the whole time and I'm like trying to sing this song. And it's so funny because I go, I, when I was like reading the comments and stuff, they're like, if this is his song, why is he reading it off of his phone? <laughs> yeah, I, was like, know I was like, I literally wrote this like two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to time it up with the guitar. Like I can't really hear anything. Heck <laughs> like, I'm yeah. like staring at my phone. And yeah, it was. Uh, the first time was yeah, interesting. Yeah. But Sean's uh, cousin took a video of it, put it on Facebook, and just blew, blew I mean, I went to bed, and there was like 2,000 views on it. And uh, Now, time out. <laughs> As someone who is trying to market and advertise their product and mm -hmm. started from scratch, 2,000 views Yeah, no, a ton. I, yeah, no, I was, I, was, I was like, I was like, wow. I, was like, I, was like I was like, wow, that's doing awesome. Yeah. And I wake up, and it's at like 30,000. Yeah. I'm like, holy this might and then be like something. And through the day, it goes up to 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. You know, it would break 100,000. And then the university texts me and they're like, hey, like, we want to use your video on our social media platform. What did you think when that happened? I was like, oh, I was like, that's, that's really that's cool. Awesome. Like, that's awesome. That's really aw Like, I was, you know, genuinely like, wow, this might be something. Yeah. You know, and I had never planned on doing music at all. Like, I was just playing guitar, just, you know, I was never going to be. A great guitar player but you know i just i just liked playing guitar and it was fun and i enjoyed singing yeah. <laughs> and so the university texts me and uh they're like hey we want to use this on on our on our social media platforms it's like well it's actually not my video like it's me in the video but you're gonna have to talk All the to the legalities so -so. of it yeah yeah and so she said it was okay the university posts on it and you know within a day it was over a hundred thousand yeah and then i think i ended up getting over like 600 something thousand and then the hospital texts me and they're like hey we want to use it on our social yeah. media platforms i'm like hell yeah go do for it, it. <laughs> and uh i think all in all 
we were right around a million views on wow. it. Wow. And uh, on something that you were at a family get together yeah. and you and decided. And I, 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 and I was actually afraid to play that song because I didn't think it did the wave justice. I guess. Um, what I, if you I, never would have done it? I, I ser- if that, if that video would have never happened, I would I would be in grad school right now. 100% when I would be in grad school right now. I would be going to school for Is that nutty therapy. to you? It's absolutely wild. Okay, good. Absolutely wild. <laughs> because I, it's wild to me. And I'm Because, yeah, I, I never, never... It just happened. ...ever thought I would, you know, go anywhere with this. You know, because, you, know, you know, you hear all these incredible singers. And, yeah. You know, and you hear Well, and especially in the songs. country music yeah. genre. Yeah. They're saturated just, with amazing talent. Yeah, and just you know, incredible storytellers. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I, at that time I didn't, besides that song, I think we wave is the best song I've ever written hands down. Um, you know, I, I thought I was, you know, worlds behind, you know, I picked up guitar when I was like 20 years old. Uh, I, you know, never even tried writing a song. You know, I, I can't read music. The extent of your music education is show choir and chorus. And I, and I I can't read music. I I mean, you could put a sheet music in front of me and I'd, wouldn't know what to do with it. it. Yeah, it might as well be French. Yeah. Like, like Dang, I, Dallas. I <laughs> cannot read music. You know, guitar tabs, I have no clue. Um, you know, I know G, C at 9, E minor 7, D, A minor and F now. Like, Country music. And I just run with run it. Run with like, the hell yeah, dude. But, um, I yeah, it. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a musical genius by any means. I, I don't know anything about this. This wasn't what you went to school for. Yeah. No, yeah. And, 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 I, and I really have... I don't have knowledge, but I have understanding, I guess. Um, and passion. Yeah. And, and um, I, I say, like, you know, like I said in high school, like I was able to get by without doing homework. <laughs> and in college, it was, it was the same, not same deal. I had to do my homework because, you know, it was a big part of the grade. But um, I've made jokes that the reason I'm able to understand complex ideas is because I'm so dumb. <laughs> That I dumb it down to like this, <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm able to communicate it. Like, yeah. You know, hey like, man, I was, you still got to be able to decipher it. Down. Yeah, yeah. I was I was in uh, uh, applied human physiology, and you know, taking classes with these brilliant people, yeah. doctors. You know, can explain the Krebs cycle to you. Like, <laughs> I have no idea. And what we're that talking, means. we're talking about you know, muscle. Uh, like the muscle contraction and how it how it happens, and the way it is is you know. You You're have. talking to a caveman too. So. Yeah, no. See, but you'll be able to understand it. You'll be able to understand yeah. it. So we speak the same there's language. Two, there's two. There's a filament in your muscle that moves, and there's a filament that it attaches to. Okay. So you know ATP is yep. is energy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's adenosine triphosphate. I didn't know what it meant, but so, I know what you're talking about. So what happens is it becomes ATP. It cocks it right. It dephosphorylates, becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate, okay. two phosphates. It moves. Okay. All right. Rephosphorylates. Grabs onto another one, moves. And it just it's just millions of those going on. Okay. And that's the sliding filament theory. And you got it. And then that Thank that you was for that. that was that was something that you know, we went over for, you know, a whole week, you know, two two full hour and a half classes. And one and minute. Yeah. You just and I, I'm it. just so I'm so <laughs> Come on. I'm I'm just so I think your brain works in a yeah, very sophisticated it, way. But it's simple. simple <laughs> like, but that's I'm, all right. I'm, just, I'm able to dumb stuff down so Hell yeah. so much that it makes sense. And, you know, it works. Now there's there's actin, myosin. You know, I couldn't really place those, but I can tell you exactly how to muscle. I mean, I could back when I was learning in it school. In school, but um, yeah, it's, it's just, I'm just able to take concepts and everything that is not important at the time gets out gets out and i'm just like here's the dumbest way I what can explain works it. And, 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 it, and it does work and then Dang. you know on the back end I, I fill in what i need to but um i don't even know how we got there <laughs> oh we're lot. talking about music and how i don't have any um musical knowledge but I have, I have i have understanding of it um, oh yeah and, it's, and it uh, works yeah it, it's working it, it does work and it's uh it's fun to you know and it you know i'm working with uh, uh joey deals his name he's okay. uh brett young's uh, F.O.H., which okay. is sound guy. He's a sound guy. Um, and this dude's musical genius. I yes. mean, I went down there to record our, uh, our the demos for my EP coming out, and uh, I couldn't play guitar to a click track. I couldn't be on time to save my life. <laughs> and he goes, all right, 
what is it? And I'm like, it's like D, G, C, you know, just telling him the chord progression. So I was like, here, it switches to, you know, C, G, E minor, D, like, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And he picks it up. He starts throwing in riffs on it. Knocks it, it out. And, like, knocks it out one take. <laughs> yeah. One take, perfectly on, on beat, click track, perfect. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, I've been playing these songs for, like, a year now. And <laughs> hey, <laughs> he, he just learned it, knocked yeah. it out, throw, throws in riffs and just i mean the guys it's fun to see though yeah and and i'm i'm able to have semi-intelligent conversation you know i don't know the terminology but i explain it it. i explain it to him and he's like yeah that's like that that's a good idea and you know um it's 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 so cool to be able to you know and and he's he's the same way he has no ego i mean he knows he's forgotten more than i know about music and um you know, but he's he has the humility to like sit there and listen and not be like, yeah. oh, this guy doesn't know what a, I don't even tritone. Right. I don't know what a tritone is, but I've heard yeah. it before. But <laughs> it's I, a buzzword, no, but yeah. But uh, oh yeah, I don't. He's know like either. this guy doesn't know what this is. Like I'm not going to listen to him. Right. But, like I explain it to him and I explain exactly you know whatever function a chromatic uh, step down. We we used it in my last song. I was like, hey, it'd be cool if we did like a da. He's like, oh yeah, dude, that'd be sweet. Throw a chromatic step down in here. Yes, and, and I was like, yeah, that. <laughs> and he threw it in there, and I was like, well, you're learning that as you go. Great. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting Quite being the experience being able to work with you know high level people with such a low, low level of knowledge. Oh come on! Um, no. But I, I I I do believe I have a I have a really good ear, and I can hear um, you know when something's wrong, and um, and my brain will work in a way where I'm listening to something and, and I'll be listening to the song, but I'll be off in another dimension listening to the song with different things in it. And yeah, it's weird, but you're very passionate about yeah, music. And I, I love music. And it's, you love it. it's, it's very cool being able to, you know, tell stories. I think that's the coolest team. part. Yeah. I love stories too. Yeah. No, it's, and I can totally relate. Yeah. I don't know anything about the audio. Yeah. The clips for any of those podcasts. I just can talk. Yes. Yeah. That's and, it. Well, that's, that's all you need. Sometimes. I guess. And right. Th- and then, and then I started out like that with music and, uh, you know, I wanted to do my own sound and, uh, you know, I've been, I've been learning. Um, Heck yeah. you know, I, I, uh, started working with a production company out of Cedar Rapids called blue sky. Um, and they've been super, super cool with me. I mean, they let me learn audio with no, credentials or qualifications yeah. at all they're willing and, to help you and, and yeah and they were they were willing to help me out and you know they continue to help me out and Hell yeah. you know i've gotten to the point where i'm i'm pretty um confident in my ability with to run sound you know i'm not gonna be running the the uh <laughs> uh what do they call it the powerhouse anytime yeah. soon the, uh, yeah. the alliant energy center but before um, we get out of here what what plans do you have for the future? You have spoke the EP. Yeah, we don't have a solid date on that yet. We, we don't have a solid date on that, but uh, there will know, be. There a, will there will be here in the in the near future. Um, the songs are getting mastered right now. Okay, um, mixed and mastered. So I I think within, you know, the next month we'll have we'll have a solid date, and it shouldn't be more than a couple yeah. months out. Um, but that that'll be coming out, and uh, yeah, I'm traveling around with uh, Warrior Rising. I'm actually doing a lot of those events. Very this summer. good. I'm going down to Broken Bow, Oklahoma this okay. this weekend uh, with the Warrior Rising event, um, and I'm excited for that. Hell and yeah! Hopefully, uh, we'll work out the the deal where I'll be traveling, you know, yeah. around the country with them. That would so, be awesome. There's be, a lot of opportunity yeah, with that, and and I, I actually had volunteered my time for that. So very cool. Um, well, thank know, you for doing they, that. They, uh, they're 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 great people. It's yeah. a great cause. And, it is. Um, you know, I've I've uh, kind of made it a point that you know i don't want to i don't want to be getting screwed over but um you know i just i just want to make it worth my while to go down there yeah. um you know I, I asked them i was like if you could just give me a hotel room yeah and, and pay my gas i was yeah. like i will be there i will play hell yeah like you know so you're traveling all over playing gigs currently yeah yeah so you know uh i was actually down in miami a couple weeks ago um, you know, played a gig down there, shot a music video, and uh, you know, recorded a song down there while we were down Heck there. Yeah. It was busy. It was, I was there for four days. We did all that. the whole time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no stop. Like Heck did yeah. not stop moving. But it's not yeah. gonna slow down, Dallas. I hope it speeds up. <laughs> Hell yeah, I hope it we're, speeds up. We're pushing for but, the speed up. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I'm in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, with Warrior Rising next week, um, and yeah, it's a 
And once we get that EP and dates out, and yeah, and then, then I'll start, I'll you know, with the uh, um, label and everything. They'll uh, they'll start booking more gigs out, yeah. you know, outside of Iowa and all that, and uh, then we'll explode. Just get running, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so before we get out of here, I got to take you to the firing range. I explained to you it's a little game of this or that. If you'll uh, try not to take too much time and just make up your mind, deal. Also. Um, it's important that we talk about this. This is a smack card, and these came in a mini pack um, for Keeley and Cambry's tribe with Jade. And when Dallas and I were sitting by each other, I had bought in a pack because I have a quote in one as well, mm -hmm. and I wanted yeah. it selfishly. And I was looking through it, and I saw that Dallas's, uh, Dallas also had a quote, so I had him sign my thing. So if you haven't bought it yet, they're for sale on the Smack website, the Premi pack. Um, it goes to benefit Jade and what she's working on, and you can find her episode on YouTube. Our sponsor for today's episode is Cool Fit. Nick Cool, owner of Cool Fit, is a holistic lifestyle coach who solves health problems and facilitates amazing transformations through an integrated approach addressing mental, emotional, and physical aspects of one's health. Uh, it's a holistic approach. We realize that health is just not diet and exercise anymore today. Uh, he has a special offer for listeners today. Anyone who's ready to take back their health, he's offering a 20% discount on his 12-week group coaching program. All you got to do is let him know that me, Nate, at The World With Nate sent you. Um, all you got to commit is two hours a week for 12 weeks to get ready to radically transform your life. I can speak to the radical transformation because my wife, Christy, has taken advantage of his program and... Uh, the things that I have seen in her, amazing her, uh, the way she used her words, um, her sense of purpose, she, she has completely changed her life with Nick, and I can talk to that. So if you're ready to take control of your life, see his success stories, learn more about Nick, check it out at www.coolfit.com or email him at coolfit at gmail. Nick, thanks for sponsoring the podcast. I appreciate it, dude. Yes, Without sir. any further ado, Dallas, are you ready to rock and roll? Oh, I suppose. <laughs> All right. First question for you is Nashville or Iowa City? Nashville. Record or live music? Live. Summer or fall? Summer. Luck. No, fall. Fall. Okay. fall. fall. <laughs> Luck or grit? Grit. Cowboy boots or football cleats? <laughs> Come boots, on, Dallas. Boots. Defense or offense? Defense. Kingston or Kinnick? Kinnick. Uh, Friday Night Lights or a sold out show? Sold out show. Hell yeah, dude. I want to take a minute to thank listeners for their support and listening. If you want to find Dallas's story and much more, you can visit www.theworldwithnate.com, all one word, lowercase. If people want to connect with Dallas Jacobus, where should they go? Yeah, you can find me uh, on, I think uh, everything's uh, at Dallas, D-A-L-L-E-S, Jacobus Music. Um, that's Instagram and Twitter. And then and I'll share your Facebook and yeah, I'll share the and, music when it yeah, comes out. Yeah, just look up Dallas Jacobus, same spelling on uh, Facebook, you, you'll you find me. Hell yeah. And then Spotify and uh, Apple Music is in the future. Your music. So. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you, Dallas, so, yeah. for your time and Thank energy. You. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a appreciate good day, you. dude. Yeah, thank you. Special thanks to my friend Katie Hine at Mattress by Appointment, Cedar Falls, for her sponsorship of Season 2 of The World with Nate.